Hello and welcome to this uh, session on app frame findings. We have with us uh, Lucas, which will demo uh, the concept where app frame is, is categorizing findings as well as database health checks. Hello, Lucas. Hi, Anne. How are you? I'm good. Good. And you? I'm I'm stoked on what you are going to show. Yeah, I'm stoked as well. It is has went pretty fast, quite honest, and it's it seems like. Great, uh, great adjustment to the toolbox that developers and implementers will have. Yes. So j uh, let me share my screen for you. Uh, just with. This. Can you see the screen well? Uh, yes, here we go. So we can start off with the application. There's uh, some adjustment, there's some findings already that somebody managed to find in a, a a couple of minutes ago so probably somebody uh -huh. just used it i tried cleaning it up yeah good but yeah it's a con it seems to be constantly in use and this does give us a base a thing to just talk about uh so in this this application as it is right now it allow it finds all the pro uh, well i'm not saying all but most of the defined problems that you, you want to search for in a, a database and you define of course them by procedures and you register these procedures so after you do that those procedures can be launched every time when an object is updated so right now let's just clear everything once again and so you can see there's no findings everything is clean imagine this is a new new client that we're coming in yeah uh, and let's go to the database manager and let's create some objects. So first of all, I'm going to create a procedure that will uh, have a variable and execute it dynamically. So if I was passing this variable down as a parameter, maybe taking in it as a parameter from a web application, this is a high risk of uh, SQL injection if somebody was to insert a uh, SQL injection statement into the variable and I would execute it directly without any verification that's a problem mm -hmm. as well as uh, we also search for float columns in the in the database because if somebody is using currency and uses a float column instead of a decimal and so on it might cause some pro unforeseen problems just because the developer wasn't uh, mm -hmm informed and hasn't really faced these problems because you know everybody is coming from different backgrounds and mistakes are possible so when we uh when we create these objects uh sorry this will be an alter statement since it is already here yeah uh so when we create these objects or create a new version renew them it automatically affects it and creates a new version, which is then passed down to a system queue table, where a scheduler uh, checks that table and then uh, takes in this object, its newest version, and runs it through different checks that are defined. And the same will be with uh, new objects being created. So I create this table, its versions are registered, and it will be slowly uh, pass down through all the various checks and check that it is up to standard and follows best practices. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't happen instantaneously. There's about a 10 second difference and it might be longer if your objects have more problems. Yeah. But if I check for some reason uh, this ran again, so my maybe there's a somebody else running this, but... Yeah. Uh, currently, uh, we should see problems start popping up in just a split second. So yeah, we immediately see uh, that there is a dynamic SQL statement in exactly fifth line, in exactly fifth line like we declared here. And this is, as I just showed you, a 10 second difference. So any developer, you go in, you, you create maybe a new object, you create, you alter an old object, you do some magic with the objects, you know, and you just want to check that there's no problems with them. So you immediately are able actually to access this uh, via uh, database manager via here in QA findings, just clicking on it, 
yeah. we'll bring you into the systems apps and oh hey our test table problems are also here and not only did it pick up that it had a float it also picked up that it doesn't have any triggers because i didn't create it via app frame i created it via yeah, the database manager PC yeah. Call, uh, cool yeah and you see it's all live so but yep. let's say let's say maybe this is a log table right so i don't want it to have triggers because i'm just gonna push in data and i don't uh, and i ensure uh safety via other regulations and triggers are just slowing down my performance those have been uh, cases that have been proven to be viable so we have implemented whitelisting for various uh, procedures so when you want to whitelist you just enter a reason you register it and when you check the whitelisted object you can see what check what object and who issued the whitelist yeah and of course the reason which i put in this just so i can know to remove it later but you can see that normally people write out uh reasons that can be checked and verified later if needed hmm. as well as grouping objects by reasons now let's say i have this new implementation of a database and uh me for me to wait for all the objects to have a to be created or have a new version to be checked is quite cumbersome so this functionality allows you to uh, launch procedures standalone meaning that they will check uh, they are launched without new object needed to be created they are launched immediately and they check the whole database mm -hmm. so of course they take longer but it allow it will register all the findings and in this co configuration, you can specify a name filter, QA, for example, just so I'm not uh, barging in anyone else's territory. Maybe I'm just a QA implementer at a specific client and I don't care about anybody else's problems but mine. Yep. Uh, I can report findings to email if there are some confidential things or I just want a full-on report on stuff. Uh, and you can also run procedures in parallel sequence. And this was implemented uh, because depending on if you are working on a client database that is live, you don't want to launch everything in parallel because that might cost some resources. Mm -hmm. But since we are currently in development and we are alone, yep. uh, we can waste some resources and just show off the functionality. So let me just tick some boxes over here. Uh, let's target everything that is severity one, which we know is uh, of the highest uh, risk, so mm -hmm. to say. Uh, and we will get a list of various procedures. And just for, to show that there, the whitelist works, I'm also going to check, check float columns. And maybe, uh, I don't know, some duplicate indexes let's say just to show that everything is fine so we can launch and, and, and as you could you could see through here you had some uh, some uh, red uh, symbols and some green and uh, i saw that that is for whitelisting if that functionality exists. for whitelisting uh, exists on that right. type of so list. this this corresponds directly to uh whether or not you will find a list over here yep. but yep. Uh, as you see, the as the greens checks went on, the yep. findings list is immediately updated. So mm -hmm. once everything is ticked, you can go back in, see everything that is updated. And you can see there's only updates on QA. So we yep. only found uh, we only found duplicate indexes. And basically, it, this is available for any developer implementer to use that has access to DB Manager and AF findings. Yep. So we, the procedure and these procedures can be uh, localized. So we're working on ensuring that you can even de developers that are, for example, wanting to have a very specific check for their implementation, not a global check like we do. Uh, let's say they have a rule where each table needs to have a column that is named, etc. Yep. They can easily register a test uh, in this list, define it, and 
that will be launched and will check the objects. Uh, every time the version is renewed, you just need to follow our best practices and guide for that. Yep. Okay, so to uh, kind of a short uh, wrap up, so I I understand. So the so this uh, this AF findings uh, or or not the findings, but if you go back to the procedure launchpad, all those tests that uh, you have, uh, these are tests that you have developed uh, and the product teams in PIMS uh, has developed and are running within our development and uh, stage environment. Uh, these checks are, uh, some of these checks were initially developed by specific pro uh, product modules, but we since have brought them in, globalized, yep. made a template for them, and they will be distributed with uh, the upcoming releases to uh, anybody who takes the new release, basically, and will be deployed all across uh, yeah, so, PIMS products. Yeah. And, and that's so, great, and, and because we use it to ensure quality, of course, in, in the, the release itself, but now we also include our test inside the release, so uh, solutions that has been deployed to clients can continue running the same test. That is entirely correct because we yeah. have faced the fact that, for example, with whitelisting, there is a good argument that just because it's whitelisted in one implementation doesn't mean it should be whitelisted in another. Yeah, so good point. Yep. Ev everything needs to be rechecked, and implementers and, and implementers and developers are want quality as as far as we've seen. They want to. Uh, be checked, so to say. They want so somebody to watch over them and make sure that when they slip, we catch them. So yeah. that's really what we're doing. We're just making, the, we're trying to make developers' lives easier. And currently, just seeing how the finding number has been decreasing steadily, and developers contacting, learning new things, new information. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, it's really fun to see how to, uh, how we can help developers grow as well, just helping them out. Cool, and and this uh, so some of the the tests are are purely been are running uh, in as a job. Some are we could say kind of in line. The one that you showed uh, on the DB Manager, you actually are writing yourself some T SQL. Behind the scenes, we have uh, checks that are being run and findings pops up, while others are uh, more heavy that are running. Is there a schedule that uh, so uh, for a client solution? Yes, so a uh, we, for this exact reason, we utilize AppFrame Scheduler and Q, yep. uh, which are wonderful functionalities. So you just set up, uh, you can set up how what frequency do you want them to be ran, and they are launched uh, according to time. And if anything fails, a, sh a stack trace can be found there as well. But once yeah. again, it's also only accessible to developers. So uh, this it, it is part of the tool set we used to provide this tool set. But everything is in the architecture, so to say. Yeah, cool. Well, this, is, uh, this is handy. And I hope that uh, we, we can, as this is within the, the latest release, uh, the January release? Uh, in January, it was still an unstable version. It's impossible to, uh, with some help, to uh, set it up. Uh, but yep. we are working on having a automatic setup in February's release, meaning oh. that once you apply updates from QA, uh, mm -hmm. all the checks will register themselves in the, in the test, and hopefully it will start running uh, yep, immediately cool. as it does in development. Yeah, so uh, one and a half week then, and uh, the release is on its way. February is uh, soon to become, so... Uh, right. Um, um, I'm less cool. Um, other things that uh, that you want to, to show off? Uh, demo, or uh, are we at the end? I think that's a, a good wrap-up. We yeah. went from uh, creating a few broken objects, uh, yeah. seeing how they are immediately picked up by the list, yeah. To uh, actually launching a few procedures, yeah. and even despite of that, it, it just has an additional mention. Uh, you can notice that this is saying that it's a DB object, and mm. I think you can deduce that this means that this does work with all types of objects, meaning web applications, uh, articles, assemblies, and everything. We don't have tests yet for them. 
uh, for them all at least. But we do see potential in growing this and we are planning to uh, do more of these expand our lists, expand our horizons. So yep. it's something to, to come and something for, for everybody to wait upon. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for uh, taking the time, uh, Lucas, to uh, to show this, and I hope that um, um, that uh, we get to see that this is also being used out at um, some solutions. Uh, they contact you, Lucas, or um, uh, if they uh, if they need any any support on uh, setting okay. it up or configuring it or have questions. Yeah, so uh, you can contact me directly, or we do have our team does have our mailbox. Uh, ASAT, but we're mostly we do respond to in teams much faster. So yeah, yeah. Giovanni Di Noto or Vito Tazdanella are my teammates, and uh, they help me a lot with this application. So uh, they will be able to help on questions and uh, best practices and why do we do how does how do things work. So uh, yeah. feel free to contact anybody anybody out of us. So. We'll, we'll be really keen to help. We love helping developers and learning together with them. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for now. Thank you.